Hi everyone, it's Annas. In today's video, I'm going to embroider cherry blossoms. You can start right away by drawing a pattern by yourself. I'm going to move the camera closer to my hands and show you how to do that. Let's get started. I'm going to draw a cherry blossom. Actually, I've already done it. About this size, draw a circle about the size of the 500 yen coin. Draw five lines and draw petals by using each line. Adjust the size and shape while you're drawing. When you've done it, make a fair copy of it. Make a fair copy with a single line. It will be easier to trace the design onto the fabric. Now I've done. I'm going to trace it onto the fabric with the trace maker's tracing paper. I'm going to trace it about in the center of the fabric. I'm going to trace it with a trace maker's tracing paper. It's a typical drawing of a cherry blossom. Trace it by putting pleasure on a stylus. Otherwise, it won't be traced at all. Try to press hard when tracing. Now let's start embroidering a cherry blossom. I want to make each tip of petals sharpened, so I'm gonna stitch this direction. Half stitch is radiating from the center. I won't tie a knot to start my thread. Make two running stitches that will be covered later. They should be made in the circle and go back into the previous hole. It's anchored now. Then trim off the tail. Start stitching from here, as I said earlier, I want to make it radiating from the center. Stitch the tip of the petals first. And then the hollow. In the same way. If you make these three stitches first, you can keep filling an area from anywhere you like. Half stitches radiating from the center. When you have stitches radiating from the center, you'll have a thick layer of stitches here. To avoid the thickness, you can go down into a bit inner part of the pattern for some stitches, but it's not good to have two short ones. So work about one stitch length inside from the outline. Basically, keep stitching right next to the previous stitch. But the hole will stand out by going down in the inner area again and again. So sometimes you should have a long stitch like this to cover the hole. It'll make the surface smooth and satin stitch looks nice and neat. Two stitches are enough to cover the hole. Work to the edge like wearing same circles. Now I've done the half of it. Then fill in the other half from the middle of it. Half short stitches again. Try to go down in under the longer stitches and have a long stitch last three to cover short stitches. You can have a smooth surface with nice and neat satin stitch. Then fill in the certain circle. Like this, I've done a petal. Do the same way for the rest of it. Go 
completed five petals now. Weave through the back and finish the thread. Add a yellow a bit for the center of the flower. I'm going to make it look like cherry blossoms. When you restart your thread, weave through the back to anchor it. Use this way to restart your thread. It's used only for the first time you start your thread to have a couple of running stitches. Go down into not the edge of the petal but almost the center of the flower. Have a rather round stitch. Have one yellow stitch per each petal. It will be too yellowish if you stitch a lot. So one stitch is enough for each petal. You can also use dark lead, it'll look nice. Like this. I've done now. I'm going to weave through the back and trim the tail. As for blue lines, wash it away. I usually do it with a cotton bud, but I'm doing it with my finger today. It's hard to wash it away around here. It needs to absorb enough water. And then you can iron it or just let it dry naturally. You can make a brooch with it or whatever. That's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.